Hey guys, uh, oh, before I begin, I kind of have a quick rant. So if you don't want to uh, you know, hear about the computer I have uh, for today, uh, skip ahead maybe five minutes, because this really isn't computer related, but I, I need to rant for my own therapy here. Um, <laughs> actually, I, I wasn't planning to do, I was planning to shoot this video tomorrow. Uh, right now, I should have been on my way to pick up a really cool Sega Saturn game lot. Um, I, I'll just go real quick. Uh, Sunday night, it, a pop, uh, you know, a Craigslist listing popped up, and it was for a couple Sega Saturn games, some RPGs like it's like Shining Force Three and Action Replay, um, Shining Wisdom, I think, and then like three import, like Shining Force Scenario One, Two, and Three, and it was like a hundred bucks. And I've wanted these games for a long time. I collect RPGs. I love the Saturn. Um, I got screwed out of a, a Shining Force 3 deal like years ago, like five or six years ago, probably more than that. Anyways, I was real hyped for it, but I could not get there until Monday. And this was Saturday. So I contact the guy, you know, I try to explain to him, like, I am definitely interested. I will be there. I got to pick, because I mean, he was selling, it was like, he knew what he had. I think he just wanted to get rid of it. Um, so he, he only wanted like a hundred bucks for this stuff. And like one of those games alone is worth more than that. And, you know, I'm not a reseller. Um, I would have got these things, I would have played them, I would have kept them, I would have appreciated and enjoyed them. Um, but I, I know, you know, I know how business works. Um, anyways, but, you know, the guy was really cool. I contacted him, he gave me his address, his number, he was like, no problem, man, I will hold these games for you till Monday morning. I was like, I can be there early, you know, how about noon, does noon work, gives us both time to get up. Yeah, sure, that's fine. Okay, so... Yesterday the listing disappeared and I was like, okay, well, maybe he was just getting a lot of, uh, you know, interest in it and he's got, you know, like a queue lined up, you know, because he was very, you know, Monday, I will hold them for you. Anyways, today comes around, you know, call, text, uh, email them, nothing. Um, so, you know, probably what happened, someone probably showed up yesterday, cash in hand, uh, someone possibly offered him you know, more, even at 200 it probably would have been an okay deal. Um, I, I know, I, I get how it works. I mean, it, it's my fault. If you find a deal, you need to jump on it. But guys, don't tell someone you're going to hold something and then not hold it and then completely ignore that person. I could have made plans for this. I mean, I could have just... I worked most of yesterday and all last night. I could have just came home and gone to sleep instead of waited up. Um, it's just frustrating. It's annoying. It's shady business. You know, I, I get it. It's a deal, a private deal. You need to jump on it. Uh, well, don't tell someone you're going to hold something and then not hold it. <laughs> it's just, it's just rude, I guess. I mean, it's just rude. I could have been doing something else. I, even if you said, like, man, I can't hold anything for you. It's first come, first serve. Even then, I might have schemed some way to be able to get over there yesterday. You know? Um, I don't know. I'm kind of annoyed. So, that's the end of my rant. I, I was thought about making a completely separate video for rants, but I don't want to do, like, a rant sub thing. So, it's tacked on to the beginning of this video. So, sorry if anyone didn't care about that. I'm sorry. We'll get to the main subject now. All right, and uh, now for the subject at hand, uh, you know, which you should know about if you've uh, seen the title or the thumbnail I haven't made yet. Um, but th these two machines actually have nothing to do with what we're gonna talk about in this video, but they're there just to kind of be a placeholder and to serve kind of a point. Um, the thing is, I was never a fanboy. I wasn't a console fanboy. Now, even at the height of the 16-bit console wars, I wasn't a fanboy. I, I preferred the Super Nintendo. I love the Super Nintendo, but I always thought the Sega Genesis had a place. Uh, I wanted both of them, and I enjoyed both of them. And this was the same with the, the NES and the Master System. I, I, I knew the Nintendo, at least here, was a better system. I, I liked it, well, in certain ways, but we won't get into technicals. But I liked both. I wanted both. This went on, you know, PlayStation 1, uh, Sega Saturn you know, on and on. I was never a console fanboy. I always preferred one, um, but there was always seemed to be a place for the other. Now, with computers, though, it was kind of different. Uh, I grew up with the Amiga. I loved Amiga. Pro I loved Commodore products. I liked the Apple II. I, I loved PC. But 
when it came to Macintosh, I was a PC fanboy. I, I will fully admit I was a PC fanboy in the late 90s, early 2000s. I did not... I, I just couldn't understand Macs. They were just weird to me. I, I could not figure out where people... I get into conversations with people... You know, I never... Well, I have a good friend that's a diehard Mac person, but we've never gotten to, like, arguments about it. It's just, like, we agree to disagree, I suppose. But it always ends up with... Part of it's because I'm primarily a gamer, you know? And, and it always ends up... where I get, We get in these conversations, and it always ends with... Like, okay, yeah, PCs are better for gaming, but Macs are better for art and publishing and doing creative things, and that always seems to be how the conversation ends. And it's, I, I don't know, but the point of all this is, of all the Mac disliking, and, uh, you know, I know I go over this every time I have a Mac video, and this may be the last time I make that point, um, but there's a reason for it, because of all the Macs, there was one Mac that I just hated irrationally above all others. And that Mac is... Yeah, this guy, the G3 iMac. I, I hated this thing. <laughs> I, um, I couldn't, I just couldn't understand it. Uh, so this was like, you know, the very late 90s, early 2000s. And uh, I just had an irrational hatred for this thing, because I don't know why. I just couldn't understand why anyone wanted it. I didn't like the look of it. I thought it looked like a cheap toy, you know, with the plastic and the, you know, the, I thought the colored shells were gimmicky, um, like virtually no expansion abilities, way overpriced. I just, I couldn't understand why anyone would want it. Now, I was completely missing the philosophy behind it. This was not obviously a hardcore PC enthusiast gaming machine. Um, you know, I, I like to make fun of it sometimes. It's, it's, you know, it's for teenage girls that just want to do homework on it, or, you know, like people that know nothing about computers, they just want to throw it in a corner, plug it in, and use the internet. But there's not, is there anything wrong with that? No. Um, but, you know, my pretty much teenage self back then, you know, just starting college, getting out of high school, uh, really couldn't understand that, that it really was for something else, you know, it, it wasn't, just because it wasn't for me and my purposes doesn't mean it didn't have a place. Um, but yeah, I, I didn't get that back then, and I hated this thing. Hated it. I just didn't understand why it existed. Um, so, why do I have one now? I, it's ironic, I guess, because the, the machine, the iMac, uh, you know, the Mac I kind of pretty much hated the most it's actually the only Macintosh I have right now that's set up in a working setup where I can just, uh, you know, plug it in, hit the power button, and use it. I have, obviously, other Macs. They are either in storage or they're being worked on or they're packed away into a corner. So why did I choose this Mac to be the only Mac I have set up? And, uh, well, the short answer is because it's pretty good for uh, late... Not easy, like just 90s Macintosh games. It's it's pretty good for that. Um, second is the reasons I initially hated it for, actually are the reasons I like it now. It's you know it's interesting to look at. It, I I maybe my tastes have changed over the years, but I do find it aesthetically pleasing, especially compared to all the other beige boxes and bricks of <laughs> PCs I have sitting around. Um, I just find it interesting, aesthetically interesting. Also, its footprint is very small comparatively. It's just everything is right there. And to be honest, for 90s Mac gaming, you don't need much. Um, and I don't need a really powerful system for it either because, well, first of all, there isn't a lot of Mac exclusives that I am interested in. Uh, there, there are yeah, there aren't that many, and there are some games that were on Mac and PC, but, you know, maybe they're Mac enhanced. Uh, maybe there's, you know, some better features or some different interesting levels in the Mac version. And that's basically all I want this machine for. So I don't need something huge and super powerful that's going to take up an entire corner. And this fits the bill, because it has everything built in. It's small. It's very simple. Um, one power cord, even with a couple peripherals, and we'll talk about that in a minute. 
But yeah, it, it just suits my needs now. It's kind of ironic because those are the very reasons I hated it when it came out. <laughs> but I have two here, actually. Um, I'm going to go over both of them, but we're really going to primarily look at this one because this is the one that's not set up. Um, also, ironically, this is the more powerful one than the one I have set up. So this one is not in as good shape. Uh, the plastic, it's, it looks, you know, it looks dulled. Um, I'm sure there's ways to clean that. I don't know about RetroBrite because it seems like underneath it, um, I don't know, it just looks like smoke and tar this was exposed to a lot more of, where the other one is very clean. Um, almost looks new, actually. Also, the speakers uh, are failing pretty badly on this one. <laughs> um, I don't know how to change these speakers. I, I was going to swap speakers. <laughs> Good luck. That's all I'll say. I, I spent lots of time trying to get the speakers out. I couldn't do it. Uh, in all the vastness of YouTube, I could not find a tutorial on removing the speakers in these things. So, uh, if you're a computer guy out there and you're watching these, please, please make a tutorial on changing, taking out the speakers in these things, because I couldn't figure it out. I found breakdown guides and stuff on the internet. Apparently some hook and you have to... I couldn't do it without fear of breaking it, and I didn't want to do that. Um, so, you know, please, someone make a tutorial on that, because for the life of me, I couldn't figure it out. Not, it doesn't seem like anyone else could, because I couldn't find a single video detailing it. But um, this was a couple months ago. <laughs> I mean, for all I know, that might have changed. Um, so yeah, that's why I'm actually going with the lesser powered one. Um, I actually don't need... You can tell the speed difference, but to be honest, for 90s games, I don't need a super powerful Mac. 350 megahertz G3 CPU in the other one is more than enough uh, for that. So... Yeah, so just a quick look at this thing. Very simple. Uh, obviously, it's a CRT. Look at the side. Uh, these, there's two big revisions. There's the early ones are tray loading, so it's more like traditional. You have a tray come out, you put a CD in it. Um, these, is, the later revisions are slot loading, so you just put a disc and it like sucks it in. Um, there's a lot of other minor differences, even between. I like slot loading, there's differences, and I will show you differences between this and the one I have set up. So, ugh. sorry with this bed. It, like whenever I put something, it sinks. So, I want to make sure you guys are able to see some of these ports here. Okay, so here's the side ports on this thing. Uh, nothing to it. You got like this two uh, audio jacks. You have a reset button. This is a programmer's button. Uh, I don't sure for what that is, but I think it gives access to the firmware. Uh, not really for the normal user to use. These are two Firewire ports. I believe it's Firewire 400. On my 350 megahertz model, these are not there. Um, so these were added uh, later. I think there was a special version of the older ones that had these, but these are absent on my 350 megahertz model. So, uh, modem jack, ethernet jack, two USB ports, I believe these are 1.1, I don't think these are 2.2, or 2.0. Um, that's about it. Back here, uh, there's the power thing, sorry, it's probably, uh, there we go. On this model there is, um, also there's a nice handle, so it is port, there's no fan in this. Um, so it's very quiet, but yeah, this, I found it to be pretty adequate, the handle there. But there should be, I think you take this off, but there's a VGA port back here. Standard VGA. I'm guessing that's for if the monitor goes down, you can have an output to another monitor. This would be really awkward to have as a tower with another monitor next to it. Um, but it is a nice option to have which is lacking on my 350 megahertz model. Basically on that one, if your monitor dies, you're screwed, as far as I know. Um, so yeah, the later models do have a couple more features. Uh, but, you know, let's take a look at this thing. Okay, so to keep this video not too long, I am not gonna open this up. It's a little bit, it's not a hassle, but it's just, you know, here's the bottom, there's a little stand, um, which is it's kinda neat. But you turn this and you can pull that out and you can do some minor stuff, you, like you can swap out the RAM, stuff like that. Um, you open this, but 
you open, take this off, and there's like a metal mesh grill, and you unscrew it, and you pull out, and then you mostly can get to the motherboard from there. There's other videos on YouTube about that, um, so I'm not, I'm just not, I'm tired, um, I'm annoyed because of the whole rant if you listened at the beginning of the video, so I'm just, I'm probably not going to go that far and do that, but I am going to show you my uh, other one, the 350 uh, hertz model in uh, action. Uh, just some quick things, there's, the CD drive is not hard to swap, uh, I've been wanting to get a DVD drive for a while for my one that's set up, but I don't know why, I'm having trouble finding one, there's just, you need a slimline one, but you need a certain model, I think, and I'm just, I'm afraid to get one that's not going to be compatible, it's just, it's really annoying, um, so if someone could tell me, actually, exactly what to look for, uh, what, like, model number or whatever for a, a DVD drive for a slot-loading i3 GMAC, uh, a GMAC. Uh, iMac G3, I'd be very appreciative of that. Um, I've just personally had some trouble finding a uh, DVD drive for it. But it's pretty easy to swap out. I think mine came with a 20 gigabyte model. The one I have set up now has an 80 gigabyte hard drive in it. Uh, I think 64, 128 megabytes of RAM is what these came with. You can upgrade them to a full gigabyte with two um, 512 megabyte sticks. So, and that's real easy to do. You just open that and you have access. So, there's that. Okay, I'm going to show you this one over here. That's the one in action. Alright, so here's my 350 megahertz model. As I got the... I don't... You can tell I haven't used this thing in a while. Um, the original hockey puck uh, mouse, I've heard a lot of terrible things about. So this is the Pro Mouse. Uh, this came out a little bit. It's still the same era, but this is basically what they replaced it with. Although I've been, research tells me these did have a high failure rate. Usually this became frayed. Um, I haven't had any trouble with this one. So on the side here, uh, you can see basically the same thing except the Firewire ports are missing, as I said. Um, now you only have two USB ports, so I have one going into the keyboard, and then my mouse is plugged into the keyboard, and I would recommend one of these things. This is just a USB hub, uh, so that gives you a lot more uh, options for adding USB devices. Now the speakers on this one work fine, uh, but I've added some USB speakers. Uh, they're not that good. They, I got them at Goodwill. They kind of suck. Uh, they're probably barely better than the onboard speakers, but less wear and tear than the onboard speakers, and eventually I will uh, hopefully get some better ones. So, uh, I believe this is one of the first computers to not come with a floppy drive as standard. So, um, you really had to get like an external uh, USB uh, floppy drive. And some companies actually made a uh, drive, it's not specific, this will work with a PC too. Uh, but this was kind of made for the iMac because I got one and it came with these little color shell things and there was like a pack of six or seven of them. So you could try to get it to match your case color. I think this is like blueberry and my case is indigo, but it's, it's pretty close. Um, so yeah, I mean, that's cool. I didn't have any problems with it. I just hooked it up to USB. There were some drivers and it works like a charm now. So if you want uh, to have a 1.44 megabyte floppy drive. These are these are cheap. Uh, I paid $12 for mine and it was boxed. Uh, sealed too. So these are very abundant still. Alright, well that's about it for the machine itself. Uh, let's let me power it up for you guys to take a quick look at. Alright, so here we go. Um, just here's the power button right here. This one, interestingly, uh, the LED for the power light is green. We're on the 500 megahertz model, it's white. Uh, so I don't know. So this thing, yeah, you can hear the speakers are not the greatest. So it's gonna take a second here. Um, uh, the OS I have on here is nine, what is it, 9.2.2, .2, something like that. Uh, I just, it's a more modern uh, OS. I just like OS 9, and it seems to be fairly compatible with uh, old, you know, 90s 
Mac games. So I asked around. I don't know a ton about Macs or Mac OSs, and uh, OS 9.2 seems to be the run that was recommended for playing 90s type games. Now I do, there's an 80 gigabyte hard drive on this. Uh, I do have it partitioned. Uh, 60 gigabytes is set aside for OS 9.2, but I do have 20 gigabytes set aside for OS X. I, I don't know why, it's just in case I ever wanted to do anything with this machine with OS X, um, I have a little partition for it that I can switch to. Uh, although, honestly, I will probably never use OS X on this machine uh, since I have a G4 machine for OS X stuff, so. Um, I don't know if that looks funny because the whole refresh rate thing. Oh. But yeah, here's here's the two partitions. Um, yeah, so that, that didn't take too long to load up. I'm going to show you a game real quick on this. And what I have out is uh, Full Throttle. Now this is the Mac edition, and this is the enhanced Mac version. Um, Power Macintosh native, this is a Power PC, obviously it's a G3 in there. I, I don't, I haven't been able to figure out how this is enhanced. I don't know if that's just like a blurb, um, or if there's actually enhancements of this version over the PC version, like higher resolutions or something. I couldn't, I don't have the PC version to compare it with, but looking online I couldn't find anything that talked about a differentiation between the two versions. So if anyone knows how this version is enhanced, if it is, uh, please comment below because I'm very interested to find out how it's enhanced. But that's kind of what I mean is sometimes there, there were some Mac games that came out that were actually noticeably enhanced over the PC version. And that's kind of why I have this thing out and set up. So... Alright. I don't know if that sounds good or not. Now here's something I, was, I don't like about this. Um, see how it's in this weird... Whatever I smell, asshole. Like, it's in this window. That's the last I don't know why, and no matter what I do, I can't seem to get it truly full screen. And the, and the thing is on my... Turn it down all the way, so... The thing is on my older one, I had a... I think it was like a 7600 or something. I did a video on it not too long ago, and I used, um, you know, a separate monitor, and it was full screen, and it looked great. But for some reason on this, I cannot get it to fill the full screen. Control panel... Uh, monitor. Okay, so okay, so let, let's go the opposite way. 640 by 480. Okay, well, maybe that will help. <clears throat> oh, it, it kind of helps. Okay, well that's better, but uh, there's still some bars at the top and bottom. Uh, I just, I don't like that. I I never had any problem with that with my other monitor that wasn't the built-in one. Um, so that's that's not bad right here. But I don't know why it doesn't just fill the screen. I don't know. I don't have that problem with anything else. I didn't have it on the 7600 with a separate monitor. It just filled the screen. Um, but you know, that's not so bad right there. It's like I'm used to the wide screen. Anyways. And one more thing I want to show you guys. So let's say you've got one of these and you know you're feeling uh, lonely for Windows. This is a kind of a cool program I sort of randomly found at Goodwill. And uh, it is uh, this thing, Virtual PC. Uh, this is 3.0. I just kind of picked it up. <laughs> I just, yeah, I just picked this up at Goodwill and it included Microsoft Windows 98 and it supports USB. It even has like Sound Blaster support. Um, I think it only supports USB if you're reusing OS 9. But anyways, let me show you this real quick. Uh, recent applications, 
to the, 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 the virtual PC. I, I never really played around with uh that's, wait, I never register. What the heck? Yeah, later. Obviously have it. So anyways, yeah. Uh, if you ever wanted Windows 98 on your iMac or any, you know, Mac, possibly later Macs, um, this stuff exists. Uh, it's probably a way easier and more efficient now, but yeah, I don't know. I just thought this was neat. I never actually tried running anything on this, but I guess this would have been an interesting option uh, back in the day if you had a Mac and you wanted to run Windows stuff. This would have been pretty cool. It does take a minute to load up. That's just such a weird site. It just seems wrong. It seems really, really wrong to me. <laughs> just, uh, weird. But yeah, it, it takes a, a minute to boot. Um, I'm guessing it's doing all kind of stuff in the background. But there, yeah, there it goes. It doesn't, it looks, looks pretty decent, actually. But apparently it's a really good way to, to swap files around, too. Yeah. That's cool. Because um, I guess you can do a file here, and like, let's say, you know, you've got a, a PC format something, and you run it, and you pop it up, and it's here. And then it's supposedly like an easy way, once you go back to the Mac part, that you can access that file. So it might make file swapping between Macs and PCs really easy, at least older Macs and PCs. I haven't tried it out yet. I'm sure it has its uses, but... <laughs> okay, this is weird. What I'm, gonna, I'm trying, I have the uh, Retro City Rampage 486 uh, edition, so this is a DOS game. Um, this is like a new DOS game. Uh, Retro City Rampage was originally a digital download, but the guy... Uh, actually came out with like a DOS version. Um, so it was like the first thing I saw, so I grabbed it. So I'm running a DOS game in a DOS prompt in Windows 98 on a virtual PC on a Mac. It just feels strange, although I don't know if it will actually um, run. I don't think it's doing anything here. Oh. Program has performed an illegal operation. Okay, yeah, I haven't been able to get it to install. It keeps giving me that error. Um, so uh, this is my last attempt. I'm trying, I put it, I load up the virtual PC in Windows 98 and then I restarted the Windows 98 in DOS mode. Uh, so we'll see if that fixes uh, any issues. This is still so wrong feeling. <laughs> okay. Ah, look at that. It seems to be, uh, well, it's further than it was earlier. Um, so, yeah, it looks like it's actually installing. All right. Well, it seems to have installed okay. Uh, so, uh, let's see if this works. Now, I don't think there's going to be sound, because uh, Retro City Rampage doesn't support Sound Blaster, just PC speaker. And... I, there's not really a PC speaker in this thing unless it comes out through the internal speakers. I, I don't know. I um, guess we'll find out. So, oh, yep, yeah, we do have sound. Uh, do not remove the floppy. Um, okay. Okay. Uh, kind of cool. So we have a homebrew DOS game from 2015 on a floppy disk running on a G3 iMac from, um, you know, 2001 or 2002 running a PC OS Windows 98 that is running DOS uh, that's now running the game off a USB floppy drive. At. So that's just... Uh, it's kind of wrong and it's kind of cool at the same time. Uh, I guess I've said that before. Whoa. It actually, it doesn't look... <laughs> the color... Oh, well, yeah, okay. I, I'm used to playing the, like, the DX version or whatever on my, uh, on my PC, the downloadable of it. 
Yeah, it uh, it runs. It's interesting. Really interesting. Although I still have these <laughs> these black bars are always there. It's I. Don't know why, I don't know. But anyways, yeah, there you go. That's the G3 iMac and some, a rant, you got a rant, you got a weird little uh, sidetrack with the whole G3 iMac thing. But um, yeah, final thoughts on this thing. Um, I hated it. I still don't think it's a good gaming machine, uh, but if you want something that has a very small footprint, is aesthetically pleasing, uh, dirt cheap, and just and you just want to play some you know 90s Macintosh games um, this would be the way to go it's you know it's powerful enough to run all those 90s games it doesn't take up much space uh, yeah I mean yeah it's okay <laughs> it's okay I, I think I'm over it I think I'm over my hatred uh, it's weird weird okay well thank you for watching Sorry if this video went on a little bit, but uh, yes, there was some experimenting to do. So, hope you enjoyed it.